Now, I won't lie to you guys. This is one of the very few things missing from Proteus' playstyle. You see, as we all know of her, she's quite a zone-centric frame, meaning that she holds areas and choke points extremely well due to how our abilities are thrown out and last with durational length. Well, with her newest augment in the Jade Shadows update, she can utilize her fourth and second combination to create one hell of an easy run-and-gun themed playstyle because, you know, what she totally needed was buffs. So, if you're a player who likes watching everything melt with little to no effort, then this is the video and build for you. As always, guys, timestamps are added to the video's timeline. Alrighty then, let's go and kick things off with what you need to know about her kit, keeping it short and to the point. Passive. Every fourth ability cast will gain a 100% ability strength increase to it. And while since she likes the scale of duration, this is quite a remarkable amount of free strength that we go ahead and get. A fantastic passive just going to get us going. Proteus' first ability is Grenade Fan. By tapping this ability, Proteus sends out slash infused grenades to the direction of your cast. Any enemies that come into contact with this will become staggered and receive slash procs per tick. Now by holding her first ability, Protea instead throws out shield satellites in which can be collected by any ally that comes closest to contact with each satellite placed. Shield satellites protect players by restoring their shields but by also granting overshields making this ideal for player protection. Proteus second ability is Blaze Artillery. When cast, Proteus summons a stationary turret that automatically shoots enemies it sees within a 130 degree angle. For each enemy hit by a turret, it begins building stacks, increasing its damage by 100% for each successful hit. Now there is more to cover about this ability for this build, but for now, let's keep it here and carry on. Proteus' third ability is Dispensary. Proteus summons and plants down an immobile dispensary, cycling between giving yourself and allies universal ammo, health orbs, and energy orbs. This is such a great ability, especially if you're in a team format or in any missions that require you to defend or lock down a specific zone. Finally, we have Proteus' fourth ability, which is Temporal Anchor. When cast, Proteus drops her anchor in place. From here, any movement travels or any abilities cast during this duration will be returned back to you as you rewind back in time to your original positioning. This also includes dying. You will go ahead and rewind back to your location but get knocked down instead. And you can also rewind back whenever you please by simply retapping the ability. Now guys, it's important to note that this ability can be cancelled with your own input by simply holding the cast ability down when it was originally active. This will not refund you, but allows you to not go through the motion sickness of her rewind and continue forwards on your path with no interruptions. This makes it for, this will make it for a good safety net towards her survival too. So that's a rough breakdown of Protea to give you an idea. You see, not that long ago, she received an augment which combined her fourth ability with her second ability, allowing for her turrets to armor strip enemies so long as she was in her temporal anchor state. I've already made a video on that build, and it's still up to date today, so feel free to go check that out. However, with this new augment she received, it's really pushing her out of her zone, quite literally. It's the same combination of her fourth and second abilities, but unlike the previous augment, she's not actually armor stripping here. Instead, if Protea enters her temporal anchor state and places down a blaze artillery in no particular order, she will now hold onto that turret, following her around and shooting at her sights. This effectively changes her from an area controlled frame to a running gun frame. The augment does have some changes to how the turret functions, however, so please pay attention. The duration of the turret when attached to Protea now scales off her temporal anchor as well. This is similar to the cooldown additions when playing the Warframe Zaku. So the turret itself has its own duration, but additional duration when your fourth is active. And I have managed to keep just one turret cycled and alive for over three minutes by juggling the drop off on her fourth and recasting the ability to pick up that same turret again. On top of this, due to the change, her turret will no longer scale further than a 20x combo. That means even if you go over a 20x combo, then pick the turret up, it won't scale any further. It'll just cap at 20. And although that feels like it can suck a little because bigger numbers are more enjoyable, do go and keep in mind, it absolutely shreds the highest base enemy level on Steel Puff Lua Conjunction Survival. This includes Exhibus enemies, Acolytes, Conculus, and any other special enemy types like Frax. It just melts them. Alrighty then, Clark. Enough 
stuff yapping. Hit me with the build. Keep in mind that this build is particularly designed for run and gun situations, especially for solo playstyles revolving around killing lots of enemies with little work involved on your behalf. So go ahead and pay attention to your temporal anchor timers and the blaze artillery will take care of the rest. Duration is him. The more of this, the better. Practically everything in her kit scales off of duration, and in terms of quality of life, it's without a doubt the best stat to invest into, giving you more focus on your movement and less needed focus on your ability rotations as now they're longer lasting. Strength pretty much follows this. It should be self-explanatory, but bumping this up increases the amount of damage output you'll be doing and buffs that you'll be receiving. Now range is definitely important, but not a major focus. In terms of quality of life, I wouldn't mind a little more in large your tile sets with enemies far more spread out but in reality that's not happening that often so keeping the range as close to 100 is the call cool, or hurting it a little can also work too like shown here in my build and then finally we got efficiency and as always it's subjective to whatever you have available for you for my build i still frequently enjoy the combination of four things prime flow to increase the energy storage equilibrium to convert picked up health orbs into energy as they're more commonly dropped and arcane energize to proc those energy or pickups and then finally i round this off with a synth mod on my companion in which has a 25 percent chance to go and drop a health orb on companion damage assists and once this all snowballs it will be rare that i have any energy issues if you don't have these guys don't worry here's a few things on the screen to go and consider helping your energy and drain input output so for the build we're slotted in temporal artillery to begin with as we're keeping this specific playstyle in mind up next we've got archon vitality you see it follows up nicely not only giving us a little extra survivability increasing our health flat out but also giving a damage increase to any heat procs being dealt by abilities and blaze artillery is all about that heat damage Prime Sure Footed is a quality of life interrupt assistance. If you want to feel unstoppable, then consider chucking this in and just call it a day. And then finally, we've got the Brief Respite. You see, this synergizes with the Blind Rage mod, as whenever we go and cast an ability and expend more energy, depending on how much energy we just spend, it converts it in a 1.5 times multiplier to our shields, giving us extra protection, whilst also again synergizing with her shield satellites from her first ability. This Aura mod is not a 100% fit into the build it's just a good idea for extra survivability so some of you guys may have noticed that we subsumed out her third ability at the bottom here dispensary for this build now this is because dispensary is a stationary ability if you cast this you would want to play around it but that's not the goal of this build so we do go and have a selection but here are two that i personally messed around with and both work fantastically Option number one is Rhino's Raw, giving a damage increase to our abilities, but also adding a double dip in to our heat procs, making this ability a no brainer for a selection like this, overly bumping up our damage output. And option number two is Grendel's Nourish. Well, since we are removing Protea's way of gaining energy from ability, we can just subsume in a different way to obtain energy with Grendel's Nourish. This allows us to go ahead and increase return and energy efficiency whilst also keeping to the theme of the build and not feeling restricted due to the immobile abilities. But do keep in mind, however, the viral proc of this ability doesn't work with Protea's turrets, unfortunately. And if you do go and take the subsumption over option one, you can change the build here a little bit by taking out mods like equilibrium allowing for more strength or duration if you want to go and fit those in if you prefer as for the arcanes in this build i already covered the reason for the arcane energized slot but again to echo guys it's not a necessity it just syncs so well with the energy return that i have for a setup in my builds and as for the other arcane slot, I would personally use either of the Molt Arcanes. Molt Augmented for increased scaling ability strength or Molt Efficiency for an ability duration increase, scaling off your active shield capacity. Now both of those go ahead and work fantastically, but if you do want to go and choose something different, then have a little dip into any of these selections on screen because they also work well too. Archon Shards. It should be absolutely no surprise that I popped in three times Crimson Shards or scale enough duration. These shards are just too good for the quality of life, but they are a necessity by all means. From there, I followed up with two times Amber Shards for car speed. This is mostly due to her fourth animation. You see, the quicker that I can go and get her to do her little spin during the animation, the quicker that I can reattach a turret back to her. So car speed is just shaving seconds off the duration downtime that my temporal anchor is in consuming time. Instead, the turret time is ticking. I know if this sounds a little weird, don't worry. It just works that way and it helps. 
other shards I recommend will be on screen. They all work well here and absolutely none of them are 100% recommended to make this build work. They are all quality of life enhancements to making you enjoy the build further. Ability rotations. Well, we got through most of the build and the explanations. Now let's go and cover how I typically play this build. Depending on how much start and energy you will have will depend on how you cycle. In my opinion, missions like Exterminate will want you to have a lot of energy right off the bat to enjoy them better, allowing you to cast freely and not need setup. Otherwise, in Juris missions such as Survival, you will slowly build up your energy as you continue with your KPM, that's kills per minute. If you have mods on your build like Preparation or are using Amber Shards such as Increase energy on spawn then you'll probably have a much better setup than most right off the bat however if you don't have these go get some kills for some energy use Zenuric focus school or even just use a large energy pad whatever works better for you now that you've got energy i would cycle her abilities somewhat in a fashion like this starting off with her first ability cycle it into the thirds into the fourth and then finally end on the seconds this is due to her passive being that it gives you a 100 strength increase on that fourth and final ability cycle in this case, we will end on her second. See, by starting with her first, you'll be giving yourself shield satellites for survival. Her third subsumption, be it either raw or nourish, can be increased by the 100% passive increase on the second rotation round. Right now, we just want to get it going, so don't worry about it. Up next, we got her temporal anchor fourth ability, which we want to be going second to last, leaving as much uptime for the ability as it was most recently cycled. And then finally, her blaze artillery, in which which Protea will collect due to already being in her fourth temporal state. Keep in mind that her third buff is already active and her anchor helps with survival on top of the shield satellites also helping with survival. Now you just give that 100% ability strength increase to her turrets, lovely jubbly. The main thing on this build to juggle is keeping an eye on when to cancel and reactivate quickly her temporal anchor. Besides from that, you can synergize this build with a weapon like Occupor or Torrid Incarnate, any kind of link beam weapons and just melt through enemies like a hot knife through butter. Thank you guys for watching today's video. As always, if you enjoyed, then please support with a cheeky like. Sharing the video with a friend is always helpful to spread the views. And if you're new to the channel, then come subscribe for future videos. But until then, I'll be seeing you guys again in the next video.